Hey guys, Ken Smith. Uh, this week on Ken Smith Fishing, we're going to talk the worst slid event report I've ever given, worst lake report I've ever given. I'm going to update you on my conversation with uh, Anthony Sharp, who caught the 40 pounds in the BFL on Saturday on Sam Rayburn. And I'm also going to give you a comparison of some Lake Master cards that I think you'll enjoy, so stick around. I'm not saying that's calling your shot, but... Big fish, big fish, Mike. Okay, so let's first get to the Toledo Bend report. This will only take a second. Well, this is a Bass Champs tournament on Toledo Bend. With the camera off, dead battery. Come around that point a second ago and threw an A-rig up there. I saw a fish chase off the point, I thought, or something popped. Threw an A-rig up in that area and had one swim off with it and I missed him. And so I turned around and threw a trap back in there, just a chrome trap, and caught one about three pounds. So at least we have a fish. Don't know that it goes to the way in. It was super deep hooked. I mean, he just flat choked it. Same cast. I think that was gonna keep though. It was the exact same cast. come up and chase. Dang it. Let's hope it might be a little better fish than that. That didn't take very long, did it? Uh, the good news is I'm in the lead and I'm gonna hold the lead for quite a while. The bad news is it's just after lunch. I got sick Wednesday night and uh, I feel terrible. I uh, I was awake at 1 this morning and got up at 4 30 and I'm just I'm really tired and it don't feel good and it just I realize that there's just there's no reason to be out here if I feel this bad. Uh, so I went and weighed our I, I caught a three you saw that three pounder I caught it on the trap. And I just went and weighed it and I'm headed to Zavala. So I disappoint everybody with not much of an effort over here, but I'm just I'm beat. This has got me beat down. So I'm gonna try to get in, get back to the house, and take some medicine, and maybe get a good nap this afternoon. And hopefully, I'll feel better and get on the water tomorrow and fish the Sweet 16. But the way I feel right now, I'd like to sleep about two days. So, oh my goodness. Sorry, guys. I was hoping to come over here and show y'all some fish, but I was so tired I about fell in the lake like. 15 times today, and I just finally decided it was just silly to be out here, so I'm headed to Zavala. Hopefully I'll see y'all tomorrow. So. <laughs> uh, you can hear, I, I'm still not 100%. I'm still pretty shaky, still not sleeping a lot. I'm hoping to get better to, to fish this weekend on Rayburn. Um, okay, so I got a chance to talk to Anthony Sharp today, and Anthony caught the 40 pounds in the BFL on Saturday. And uh, we had a really good conversation. Uh, we had connected a little, several weeks ago on the FLW Tour event. He'd asked me a question on that. He's been a follower, so thanks for tuning in, Anthony. I appreciate it. I'm excited that somebody as part of the Kinsmith Fishing family uh, caught that giant stringer on Rayburn. 
uh, we had a long conversation and it was it was really interesting he obviously is a good fisherman he's a guy that like a lot of guys has put family and and, and you know, wife and kids ahead of fishing and work ahead of fishing uh, he works on pipelines, so he's out of town quite a bit, but an avid outdoorsman and obviously a really solid stick, and obviously a guy who likes to fish offshore. So what he described, I'm sure everybody has heard him describe kind of what he caught. And by the way, he fished with a, a, a co-angler who's one of my favorite all-time co-anglers that I've had in the, FL, in the BFL, and he made the same comment about him. Um, uh, Antoine, by the way, is who that is. But anyway, um, what, what he said basically was, this is just a, a point, if you will, it's got a drain runs in behind it. Um, fish are not related. There's, he said there's grass within a half a mile. So that, you, you know, if you're trying to figure out where he is, which I'm not, that would tell you, you know, again, just exactly what he said, kind of mid-lake. Um, but he said uh, he is, he's on a point near the main lake. So he's catching, and his thinking is he's catching the first wave of giant fish coming in. He said something that I found really interesting. He said that he found these fish a week ago, or maybe two weeks ago, I think a week ago, before a club tournament. And it was one of the few groups of fish that he side scanned, and when he drove back over them, they stayed there. And I don't know if he was thinking he's pushing these fish by driving over them, but I think maybe what he's describing is exactly what the young guy was seeing at Toledo Bend that's catching those fish, flipping spoons on them. And that is, these fish, I'm going to use a Todd Driscoll word, have become a little bit pelagic right now in that they're following the bait fish. So you'll see them here, and then they're gone. They're somewhere else. And he said this is one of the first groups of fish that he has run across this year that he drove over them with his side scan, circled back around, and went over them with his down scan. And actually, he said he uses side imaging in 2D, not 3D. He said he just has a better feel for what he sees and knows he's seeing with the 2D. But he said uh, when he drove back over with the 2D, they were right there. Now, he said Sunday they had moved down the point a little bit and had suspended. And he said they're much harder to catch when they're suspended. But he, he's telling the truth. I mean, I could tell by talking to him. His story is consistent, and I, he's also just a guy you can tell talking to him it's not going to bull, bull you on this stuff. He's catching these fish on a Carolina rig in, let's say, 16 to 22 feet deep, and he's catching them on a crankbait. Uh, and by the way, I think there was a misconception. He weighed a nine something as his big bass in the BFL. But interestingly, he weighed the wrong fish. And he told me, he goes, man, and I get it. He said, I was totally flustered. He did not expect that stringer to weigh 40 pounds. And he had two giants. And he said, if you look at the picture, you can tell the one fish is much bigger than the other fish. And he weighed the smaller of those two fish. So he weighed a nine and a half. He said his other fish was right around 11 pounds. So. He had two for 20, and then he had three more for 20, for 20. So he just had a giant stringer. He almost backed it up Sunday in the, in the Outlaw Outdoors tournament. Uh, they had 17-ish pounds, but he said he lost a couple of giants on a crankbait Sunday. Um, it was interesting to me that he said his cranking bites, he's getting on top of the point, throwing deep, and crashing that crankbait back into the point. So maybe he's showing them something that most of us don't show them. I think it's just the way he figured out to get those fish to react to that crankbait. But for what it was worth, it was a really interesting conversation. I asked him how far this point was from an area he felt like these fish would spawn, and he said maybe five, 600 yards, not very far. I asked him how far it was from a major creek and or river, and he said probably a quarter of a mile. So it's not really, these aren't really river or creek related fish. These are just deep water suspending fish that are finally moving up, and he caught a wave of them. Uh, he said that he did note that the water was in the low 50s Friday when he checked them and caught a six or an eight pounder, and then Saturday when he caught them, he said, but then Sunday morning, it was much cool, much warmer sun, uh, Saturday night. He said Sunday morning, uh, the water was in the 56, 57, 58 degrees early, and he said that he thought that might have had something to do with why those fish may be suspended back out there, that change into the water temperature. He said every one of those fish was on its side as soon as he put it in the lava. By the way, they all survived. They got fizzed at the, at the weigh-in site and got released. But obviously those fish are fish that are living deep right now that he caught out there deep and, and brought shallow, and that's what turned them on their sides with their swim bladder, bladders inflated. So uh, thanks, Anthony, for spending a few minutes with me. 
Uh, I hope that's helpful for you guys. Again, Carolina rig, and he said a 8XD, a Strikeen 8XD was his crank made of choice. And uh, said he found those fish, you know, with his electronics. And uh, said he spent a ton of time. He said he's probably spent more time graphing than he has fishing. That's really hard for me to do. I guess it's something I need to get better at because guys are finding these giant stringers of fish doing that. So something probably a lot of us need to practice a little bit more. Um, now, the last bet I've got for you guys today is I just bought, I had the original version of the Humminberg Lake Master card, and I had version two. So the original Lake Master card, there's now five versions, and in the Lake Master Plus card, there is three versions. The mapping part of the cards is the same on the version three of the Plus as it is in version five of the original. The difference is on the Plus, you get the satellite overlay images. So I'm going to show you guys some comparisons here between Toledo and Rayburn, between the, the version 2 and the version 5, and a Navionics card as well. And then I'm going to show you whether I think it's worth the spin for the extra 20 bucks for the plus card to get the satellite imaging. So, hope you guys enjoy this. <clears throat> okay guys, since we didn't get a good um, lake report this week, I wanted to show you what I spent money on this week, which is probably going to cause you to spend money this week. So. This are my Humminbird Helix. These are the base maps on them. This is Toledo Bend. This is the housing arm. So I have, originally I had the Lake Master, the very first, and that's probably really hard to see, but the very first Lake Master map that they came out with, this would be version one. And if we load the map on here, what you're gonna see. <clears throat> Nada, right? So the version one was Nada on Toledo Bend. It was Texas, Oklahoma. This is version two. You know what? Let's just do it on the big unit so it'll be easier to see. On version two, we got some Toledo Bend, but not a whole lot of Toledo Bend, right? So um, I talked to my buddy Dicky this week, and he said, "Holy cow, dude! You got to get version five. So. There is now a Lake Master and there is a Lake Master Plus card. So the difference is, the only difference is, well, $20, but also on the Lake Master Plus card, you can have satellite imaging overlaying the bank or overlaying your map. So this is now, again, back to the base map. This is, so on the Lake Master card, there's version five, which is the most recent. And on the Lake Master Plus card, I hope you can see that, this is version three. Now it's the same lake map, they just haven't made as many of these. But the plus version, so the, the regular version five is the most recent. On the plus version, the three is the most recent. And what you're gonna see is, holy cow, look at the additional detail, okay? I mean, whoops, exit. The detail on this thing is I'm gonna make a pun off the charts, right? So I mean, it's just crazy how good the detail is. Now, the question to me, in my mind then was, it's, does it make sense to have the overlay version, excuse me, the, ver the, the plus version, which gives you the satellite overlay or not? Now, it looks cool, so let's go here. What you saw me do there was, I went into menu, menu, I went to auto, Hummingbird Auto Chart, I went to my overlay options, and I said on my map overlay, I want the aerial overlay, and on the transparency, I want it to 30, so you could reduce it down even more. But that gives you that map overlay underneath it. Okay. And went to my base layer and I said I want my base layer to be my 2D map. I could have left it my aerial, but you see it takes away your lines. So I want it to be my aerial. Excuse me, my base map. So I guess if I'm going to say, does it make sense to spend the extra 20 bucks to buy the plus card? Uh, maybe. Uh, I mean, it's cool. And actually, I guess also, for example...
it looks to me like as you normally see in um, in the aerial overviews when you really try to zoom in you lose some definition right but I could see where you know it'd be nice to see that little drain running through there that's obviously shot when there was grass between those islands you can see kind of the boat run through there it might be handy to buy uh, for when the lakes real high so you could go in and set the water level higher um, Honestly, if I had the version 5 of the plus card, I would not spend the extra 20 bucks to buy the version, excuse me, the version 5 of the regular card. I would not spend the 20 bucks to buy the version 5 of the plus card, but I'm going to buy a second plus card so I've got it at the front of the map back just because $20 doesn't seem like much to spend to have that aerial imagery added to it. So I think that's pretty cool. Let's look at one more comparison. I'm real curious about something. Okay, so now we've swung over to Rayburn, and you guys have heard me talk about before, one of the things I've always wanted to learn more about is the Caney Flats. So that's the Caney Boat Ramp, and this big area out here is called the Caney Flats. So that is the base map on the Hummingbirds. Let's compare the base map to the newest version. So that's going to be the Hummingbird, and this is going to be the newest version of the Navionics card. And let's just take a gander at the difference in these two. And I've not seen the new Navionics card. I heard it's really cool on the south end of the lake, so I'm curious what this is going to look like. Okay. I'm going to say the Hummingbird card. I'm going to say this is why so many guys that run Lawrence's and Garmin's still have a Hummingbird for mapping. I mean, there's just there's not any comparison right there. So truthfully, again, a newest Navionics card, I'm not sure that the base map on my Hummingbird is in a better map for that. I mean, I, it, it, there's really just not that much difference in those cards. But again, let's compare on Rayburn, the version 2 of the Hummingbird Lake Master map versus the version 3 plus, which is also the version 5 in the base card. Yeah, I want to say even here, let's look out here where these two creeks come together. It looks like there's tighter lines, but let's make sure we're doing the same thing here. Yeah, so. I mean, yeah, I think there's a little bit better definition. There's certainly a huge difference on Toledo. I think maybe a little bit less so on Rayburn. But for basically two tanks of gas, <clears throat> or maybe three, uh, I think it's probably worth having the newest cards for the best mapping you could possibly have in your boat. Let's make them the same. Still a better map, no doubt. I mean, you can see the additional creek swings in here that's not on this map. Uh, so this is the, again, this would be the Hummingbird version 5 in the playing card, or the Hummingbird version 3 in the plus card. And I'll put a link in the description down below where you can go on time, Tackle Warehouse and buy that. And remember, by doing that, you support Ken Smith Fishing, and I really do appreciate it. And crap, now i got to go spend another 149 bucks, so I have the same map in the back. But... There's definitely a difference there, I, I, I have to say. So out of curiosity, still doing sort of the same thing. So this is, uh, this is the mouth of mud. And you can see, there's just more, uh, there's more lines out there. There's a better detailed map out there. A little bit of difference out here. Not a tremendous difference. Not any surprise. You can see I've got points on basically every little spot on the edge of that where I've caught a fish at one time or probably before a tournament that need to be cleared off. And, all the little points and brush piles, but um, I still think there's a fair difference in the maps. Obviously, different parts of the lake have different amounts of detail, but I think overall, uh, it's probably worth spending the money to get the newer, uh, more detailed map, especially with the groovy overlay satellite imagery. One thing I'm curious about that I think I know the answer to, I don't think I can flood that, so let's take a look at something. Let's say the water gets to be 10 feet high again. This is something I have no idea about, but I was curious.
Yeah, so it's not going to go outside of its borders. I'm going to make sure that's the case. So let's put it absolutely dead on top of the timber line where the satellite imagery starts in the so it's right there, right? Now let's drop the lake back down to pool and see if it moves it. So it doesn't. So the map is limited to the map. It doesn't go into the woods, if you will, if the lake was low. So that was something I was curious about and you were probably curious about too. So there you go, guys. Hope that's helpful. And remember, link below in the description on YouTube if you want to go pick up one of these cards. Thanks, guys. Okay, so I think I gave a conclusion there, but my conclusion is um, I absolutely am going to upgrade all of my cards. I need two cards in my boat because I run two maps, one at the bow and one at the dash. I want two, either threes or fives. I kind of like the satellite, and truthfully, for 20 bucks, I'm just going to buy another one of the plus three, version three cards. Um, I think that's well worth the spend, um, and that's what I'm going to go with. I, I'm only, if I was only, I would not upgrade from a version 5 to a version 3 plus to get the satellite Jimmy. How about that? I wouldn't, I wouldn't replace that card. But if I want to spend $129, i am going to spend $149. So again, a link in the description on YouTube if you want to buy that Tackle Warehouse. That would support our channel, and I appreciate it. And I'm hoping this voice sounds better as the week goes, and I can get some sleep. And uh, we'll be able to get out on Raven this weekend and fish uh, fish the big TTT tournament that's going to be down there this weekend. Uh, if I don't feel better, I won't, but hopefully I will. So I'll hopefully see some of you guys on the water. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next few days. Oh, you know what? I've got coming later this week. Sarah hates that. Oh, you know what? One more thing. i got a highlight reel coming. So about the last 18-month highlight reel. So I'll get that up for you guys too.